Every girl in the world is not going to say that they have mediocre vagina or that they have just... And why don't they... I don't know. Y'all do the same thing. What? Not one man is going to say, my dick is mediocre, my dick is average, right? But I know, and people are like, how do you know? For one, a man died. But for two, I know that I have good sex. I've always been wifed. Men meet me and they wife me immediately. They love that I'm a nigga. Like, I'm a... I'm I'm about to say, you just... They love that that I get money. I'm a good get her. They love that I, I cook, I, I clean. I like to have sex. I'm very sexual. I fuck bitches. I suck dick from the back. Like, and you and you also nothing. and you let the man also bring in. Yes, like, I have threesomes. I invite my friends into the bedroom. I, you know, I do all of these things that men want. So I was all, I was never, my friends used to call me the serial wife. Like, I was never single. Even when I wasn't single, even when I was single, I wasn't single because there was a nigga that thought I was his bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never been... I've always been in a relationship. I've always had a man that's willing to risk it all for me. I don't know what life is like without that. Do you do these things, or maybe right, maybe so now, right? But let's go back to entirety, right? From the beginning. Mm-hmm. Did you do these things with these men because it's like, I want to please this man, or this is to please me? Or... It's, it's, I'm a pleaser, for one. Not just in the bedroom. I am the let me make everybody around me happy, let me make everybody around me comfortable. Again, this is what I get from my mother being a caretaker. My mother was like that. My mother was the woman that handled everything for everybody. She shared her resources. She put you on to whatever. She was always trying to help, and I get that a lot from my mom. So it's fine. So I, um, I, besides me being a pleaser, um, trying to help in any way that I can, I, just, I just like to do. I don't know, it's weird. Like, a lot of girls say, oh, he gotta earn that. Like, no, I'm cook. Listen, I'm the girl that I'm gonna invite you to my house for dinner on a first date versus trying to get you to take me to Roof Chris. I don't want Roof Chris. I wanna cook. Let me tell you. I love I you. I went viral I love you. on. I, I love listen, you. I went viral on The Breakfast Club. I was uh, doing a promo run for Beyond the Pole on WeTV. I was in season two of that. And I, I did an um, interview on The Breakfast Club promoting the show. And um, there's a story that Angela knows oh so well because we talk about it on lip service a lot, but Charlemagne and Envy had never heard the story. The story is that my very ultimately worst date in the history of dates was <laughs> I met a guy, he flew me out. We, um, he flew me out to somewhere, I think Dayton, Ohio. And really? it was Valentine's Day. And he kept ranting and raving about how he was going to take me to his favorite restaurant. And he took me to Applebee's. What? And and now, mind you, this was in, like, 2002. I've been to Dayton. There's not much there in Dayton, I'll be honest. (laughs) But here's the thing. They tried to... That's all that there is in Dayton is Applebee's. But how was that your favorite restaurant? Anyway, so... (laughs) That's all he knows. Clearly. Okay. So, you know, we talk about this a lot. I tell the story on lip service a lot. If it comes up, you know, I always have the same answers because all my shit is real. And um, we talk about it on lip service. So Angela brought it up to Charlemagne and Envy. And <laughs> um, it went viral. And the people was dragging me in the comments because they were That's like, the oh, you. bitch, you was raised on McDonald's. Don't act that too good for everything. Envy. And here's the thing. It's not that I'm too good. I worked at TGI Fridays when I was 17, 19 years old. I worked in um, the hospitality field for the entire time that I had any type of real job. I know your food. I know the quality of this food. I look like this because I take care of my body. And part of taking care of your body is paying attention to what you put inside of your body. I drink water, right? I eat fruits and vegetables. And I take CMOS shots before anybody even knew that was a thing. Like, I take care of myself. So I'm not an Applebee's, wait, Friday's, wait, wait. Chili's. Wait, I'm not that wait. girl. I got it. Wait, Gigi, I want to say something. Hold on. What's wrong with your palace upgrading? Nothing. Like, if you were eating McDonald's I'm saying, and Burger I'm not gonna King, lie. and then you start Nothing. eating really good, your palace changed. Nothing, but the people were I so mad at McDonald's. me because they felt like, they felt <laughs> like into each his own. I'm not saying that you Crazy. can't eat McDonald's. I even me. eat, I, listen, every so often I'll go ahead and give me a Jack a Daniels bit. chicken. Because <laughs> that sauce <laughs> is popping. Yeah, that Friday's sauce is popping. Like so I'm just, I'm not a, I'm just not, I'm just not a chain restaurant consumer. Right. Okay. In in these in 
this day and even back then, 2000, 20 years ago, I was not into chain restaurants. This is not how I was, you know, raised. It's not. I would have rather, and this is what the people missed. I would have rather him taking me to the grocery store and, and we bought some dinner, and I would have rather cooked him a meal when love, even though I just met this man, would have been the number one ingredient. That, that would have been a better date for me. With that being said, date box, date. okay? We do have a bunch of different things every single month, and sometimes you might get a meal or an ingredient to cook with each other as a date. Right. Yeah. So Big I would have rather... Big him. shout out to Date Box. Big shout out to Date Box. He should have had a date box, and then maybe he could have got this box. <laughs> Instead, I got on a flight the next day, and I never spoke to him again. Yeah, never. Have you ever been back to Dayton? Hell No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look, I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie, I I agree with you 100%. Yo, listen, I said that we had a question a couple weeks ago or a couple shows ago, and the question was, could you, how could you spend what forty dollars on a first date? Easy, the grocery <laughs> store, flowers included. I know, but flowers, but... wine, meal, forty dollars, Publix. What, what did I say? Everybody at the table. Oh, I'm sorry, we in we up north. Um, shop right. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but for those shop. of y'all who don't know, <laughs> 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 under the conditions, <laughs> under the conditions, if it's a first date and you you don't want the person to come to your house, yes, I would say a picnic. A picnic. A picnic is fair. Yeah, absolutely. You cook, the, you cook for the picnic. But see, now yeah, you in bring this, the basket. In you this, bring everything in, in the instance, basket. Somebody said lunchables. He flew me out. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's all so we were staying at his house. Yeah, yeah. So that's all. So right. let's go grocery shopping. I'm going to cook for you. Wait, hold on. So you could you could pay for a flight, but then you go to Applebee's? It's just what he knows. <laughs> I'm just saying they don't just, add up. Just what, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't add up. But if that's all that the options was, listen, he could have took me to um, Miss Rosie's diner and I would have had a better time. Like, you know what I'm saying? He could have took it me to a regular mom and pop restaurant that's something, you know, specific to that area. A, a nice, you know, family owned restaurant where the people grew up there, the grandma taught them the recipes. I would have had a very good time. I would have yep. got to know him. But Applebee and it was the way he kept my favorite restaurant. You gonna love it. Ooh, I can't wait. It was that's, so good. It was Applebee's. And it was Applebee's. <laughs> you know I wanna say something I always it's find interesting Applebee's everywhere. In time, right? This is what I find interesting. And this was twenty years ago. 21 years ago. <laughs> 21 years ago. He said 02. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> so here's what I find interesting. I hear stories, right? And women be like, this dude is so corny. This dude is so... Th like, they just it just happens. And I'm like, damn, what, where, where y'all get these guys from? Because I, I don't know, but I know they exist, right? Yeah. And but everybody has a, a different type of uh, definition for what they consider corny. Okay. So... Did you I think kinda, he was corny? What do you consider corny? Yeah. I kind of like... A different kind of corny. Like I like the regular schmegular degular corny. Break that down. So I like. I, I don't know if it's because of what I've been exposed to in True. this industry. Young. And especially at a young age. Yeah. For a long period of time. Huh? You heard all the games. It's, I've heard it all. I've seen it all. I've done it all. It's not a couch I ain't stood on. It's not a celebrity I ain't party with. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not much to impress me. So when guys see me and they like, oh, she's this, she's that, she does this, she goes here, I've seen her on the red carpet this place and the Grammys that place, they feel like they have to come with a certain state of impression for me, and I find that corny. I would rather the other corny. I would rather the keep it 100, show me the real you, don't try to impress me because you think you have to. Like, mm. I would rather a regular schmegular take me to a fucking Applebee's? museum. No. <laughs> take me on a date in the park, picnic. picnic. Take me take me roller skating. Like, give me a new experience that I've never had before. Take me to make motherfucking a clay pot, like, on Ghost. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. show me some different shit that I've never seen before. That, that and it doesn't have to be a first class flight in a trip to the Bahamas. But okay. that's what guys see me and they think that that's what they got to do to get me. And I find that corny in a negative way. Okay. I think it's corny too. I've been saying that's been corny since like, the beginning. I, don't, I, I know that I always say lead with the bag because I got my own bag. But don't lead with the bag because you think to that... To impress you. Yeah, don't so like, do it with the wrong intention. So if Lead with the bag because that's what you normally do. Lead with the bag because, well... That's well, who you are. By lead with the bag, she's not saying... Well, maybe I'm not going to say what you're saying, right? But by lead with the bag, maybe the ideology is don't use your money, but be 
of value. Mm -hmm. See, there's a big difference. Exactly. When you got money, you walk like you got money, you act like you got money, you have the mannerisms and the etiquettes. But when you use your money, Listen. To feel like you deserve to be with somebody when who has money. you use your money to express your value, mm -hmm. you will hurt. Yeah. That's 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 what I, I'm just getting you get from. When I'm you saying? using your money to express your value, mm -hmm. I would never. But okay, like when, it's, when it comes natural, it comes natural. But what if don't you don't force like, it? Yeah. Like what if you like, let's say, buy a um, I don't know, a, a, a Phantom or a Bentley, right? You just like I, I like this car. Are you expressing your value? Or are you saying to? Are you saying nah? This ain't it's a car for me. It's just something that I like. When you buy a Phantom or you buy any type of car of value, and this, and the first thing is your mind is, I'm gonna get mad, girls. <laughs> That's not you. Again, it's your you, intention. You have no value. It's your intention. You have the to showcase. The intention behind it. the actions yeah. that makes that this draws the line of if it's valid or not. Yeah. In my opinion. If I so buy that car is not never... creating value for you, so you don't feel like no, it's it's creating a facade of value for you. Yeah, to the people, not to you. Yeah, to the people, but not to you. Yeah, but on the outside looking But in. if you know, if you became successful enough to be able to afford a supercar, then at the end of the day, you're rewarding yourself. Yeah. For your yep. success, for your hard work. That's how I look at it. Which is yeah. I got five thousand dollar glasses on my face. They're prescription, but I rewarded myself from the yep. from my hard work. I wanted yep. these glasses. You know what I'm saying? Like I could have easily went to Lens Crafters and got some no name brand frames, and I can see I'm, out I'm of them. On, just I'm on my way to Lens Crafters pretty soon. But, my eyes but I chose the heart it. frame Cartiers with the diamond cuts because I felt like I earned. These. And yeah, I'm just using that as an excuse because it's on my nice face. Nice glasses, yeah. But you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, it's. But you didn't buy. See, and that's the thing. So like men and women, right? Because there's some women that try to buy men as well as men try to buy oh, women. Oh, they not five thousand. I was exaggerating. <laughs> they was they was more like twenty five hundred. But <laughs> see, I like her. She's honest. Yeah. So so you know, people were like, "Bitch, eh, I got them glasses." <laughs> 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 you can't, bitch. So yeah, shout out to Sale Opticians and um, Phipps Plaza. I'm, I'm finna come see y'all. I got another frame, so I'm trying to work on. So oh my shout out God. to my people over there. They take care of me every time. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. And, and I think that I, I think like that's the as funny as the sound and as simple as the sound. I think that's the hardest reason why people can't find the person they want. People have a really hard time just being real. Be cool how you be cool. Yes. That's all you got to yes. do. Stay in your lane and do your you thing. You know what the thing is? What? People are so pent up on um, the expectation of society, the expectation of, you know, what they think the people want mm -hmm. and, and what they think that they should be giving the people instead of doing what they want to do or, or act the way they want to act and feel natural just doing them. People always yeah. put a... Uh, they show up with their representative. You know, they put that face on because they feel like this is what the people expect. Life, your your big shout out to Fatty. Life, you is a magnet, right? Period. You get what you attract. Mm -hmm. And maybe people are going through life attracting all the things they don't want, so they chasing what they do want. But what they do want ain't chasing them. So your life becomes a whole fucking... You ever see somebody just coast Confusion. through life, everything comes to them, and they don't even chase it? That sound like me. That's how I got here. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, behind the scene, guys. So that's not the whole table. And it's like when you chasing something, is I, I remember Nas, Nas said this line, which I thought was like one of the dopest lines ever. He said, I got no game. It's just some, just understand my story. We came up with this hypothesis or ide ideology or theory that a lot of people think that they have opinions and perceptions and they don't. <laughs> it's all regurgitated mm -hmm. from what they've been force fed. No original mm -hmm. thought, you're saying. They don't even possess it, so they think that they feel this way is them, but it really the, the way that they feel is whoever they look up to. Yep. Oh. And so now they're chasing whoever they look up to is chasing. They're not even they don't even know who they are. They don't know their own opinions. They don't know what they truly want because they just want what whoever is being, you know, the hierarchy of whatever they love. So they don't know what they're attracting. Yeah, they're attract they're attracting something that they are being told to attract. I feel like social media has a lot to do with that too. Yeah, or entertainment. You know, we we blame Marketing, we blame social yeah. media, but it's definitely entertainment, right? Because before it was television. Yeah. 
you know, now we got social, social media. Social media is the new TV. Yeah, but you know, I'm not going to lie, right? <laughs> Internet if, is the new TV. It is. It, like, when the Phantoms, I, I want to talk about Phantoms, because I always talk about Phantoms, right? Because I want that, I want a black two-door Phantom, My right? boyfriend has a Phantom, and he takes road trips in it. <laughs> right? And so I would the, never the, take a road trip in a Phantom, but he, it's a regular car to him. It's we a car, but it's a nice car. Alabama, See? And he's like, oh, um, we're going to take the Phantom. And I'm like... See, that's the, not... The two-door joint, the Ghost? No, it's the big one. The four-door joint. Yeah. Okay, I like the two-door yeah. one. Yeah. I like the two door. See, I, I, I don't. The, the four. That's door not one leading is, with your money. Huh? Because, no, <laughs> that's not that's, leading with your money. That's normal to him. Because if you was he, leading he with your money, you would not do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just in the position Whether of doing. Whether it's the yeah. Cullinan or the Phantom or the the, the drop top Bentley, like he, this is every day for him. Now he does have a, a suburban, and you know the parents drive a, a Jeep, and the, the son has a Camry, so he might jump in one of those when he feels like he wants to. But it's every day he's Starbucks drive through in a Rolls Royce. I know. So that's regular for him. I, I, um, a lot about uh, the culture, and that's how they are. Yeah, that's how they are. They're dope though. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to Unique. She says she loves the Phantom. <laughs> yeah, the Phantom too. We got matching tattoos in the Phantom. What the twos? Yeah, he got fours and I got twos, but we did it in the back of the Phantom. It, the, the, I need to step my I need to step my game up. <laughs> that was my birthday <laughs> gift. My birthday gift to him. Um, the first year that he had. Like, so I, like so you did tell us that you. Do you mind if I tell, you know what I'm saying, about your tattoos? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Listen, I'm open book. I know, I just got, I wouldn't talk about it if I... Did. We're heavy on consent here. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. you... Okay. It's not, thanks, appreciate it. You guys caught that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, all right, you did say that how you had um, your ex's name tattooed on you three times. Three different times. And now you have your new boyfriend's name tattooed on you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's, like, your sign of loyalty or... It's just something you less like to do. I got a bunch of tattoos. All of my tattoos mean something. It's not giving Macarena. I can explain every single one of them, even the snake. Um, the ex, I got his name here at first, um, when we first became an official couple. And then I was, um, he's from here, New York City. Well, New York. And I um, decided one day, like, you know the I heart. NYC, you know, that's on the t-shirts and shit, mm -hmm. the bumper mm -hmm. stickers, the I Heart NYC. So his um, nickname is three initials. So I'm like, I should get I Heart The three ABC, initials. Right? Okay. So I got that, like, over here on the rib. And this is already after I had this one. I was like, ooh, I should have got this. So I got it anyway. So at this time, I have two tattoos with this man's name on it. Happily in love. Yeah, happily in love. And this was within our first two years of being together. Go. Right. So then, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of getting my sleeve. So I'm adding on to, you know, to the arm. I worked on the sleeve for a really long time. And um, I told him, like, oh, I'm getting another tattoo. So he's like, you should get another one from me. So I'm like, okay. So on the back of my neck, I had, uh, we're both Geminis. So on the back of the neck, I had my, um, I had Gigi and his initials. And it was a Gemini symbol that went from pink to blue, like, you know, for me and him as our Gemini union. And um, the first time, so now I have three tattoos with this man's name on it. So <laughs> the first breakup, goat. I got this one covered. The second Not a goat. breakup, I got this. <laughs> one covered. Not a goat. <laughs> and um, then I got this one covered. Before the third breakup, I got this one covered. Oh, you knew you knew you were breaking up. We broke up three times. I'm talking about before the, the nail in the coffin breakup. The final one. But yeah. The, the breakup. You know you're that, breaking up with somebody. I feel like women know ahead of time. I feel like we leave the relationship mentally before we leave the relationship. I've heard that. My physically. dad said that. A woman always leaves we, you. Like... We're already on to the next before we physically walk away from the relationship. Ah, I felt it one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, yo, what are you but, doing? <laughs> so our first two out. breakups... No, no. <laughs> our first two breakups was because I caught him cheating, and it wasn't the cheating, it was the disrespect that came along with the cheating. Yeah. The last breakup was because he, um, it was his insecurities, and, um... He thought you were cheating? I don't know what he thought, but I, I guess. I went on a business trip uh, to Houston for a weekend, and I stayed an extra day. And when I came back from Houston, he had changed the garage code on me, so I was locked out of the house. He's a Gemini. Yeah. He's very emotional. 
So we broke up. Yeah, most and, of us are emotional. And we lived. I'm not gonna lie. If you stood an extra day, I might spaz. So when I went, back, <laughs> I might have been mad. So when I went back into the house, um, I moved into a guest room, and we lived in the house for two months before I moved out, but as officially broken up. So he was doing Did y'all talk in those two was, months? Uh, no. No. We didn't have anything to talk about until we decided to do move out date in my severance package. <laughs> Your what? Severance package. What's a severance package? Every CEOs. time I moved out, he gave me money to start my life over. So you, so you that's, got, that's you got three packages. <laughs> yes, I did. She probably like we were breaking up right now. Yo, what? And the, and the and the third package came with a car. <laughs> Shit. Because he had just paid off my he had just paid off my car. I had, I owed like thirty thousand on my car loan, and I got the car during one of our breakups. And when I went back to him, I'm paying this car note, and then now we're back together. He's like, "Fuck that car note. I'm gonna just pay off the car." Mm -hmm. And he paid off the car. Um, it was like thirty thousand that he gave me the check, and I went and paid the car. So now I have the title. The car is mine. And um, a couple of months after that, we broke up. And then he gave me a, another check. You know, the start my life over severance check, and I already had the car. So, how much were these severance checks? If you don't mind, me more than six figures, I'm sure. No, <laughs> not more six no, figures. No, I wish. Not more than a hundred. No, not okay. even I was that much. Like a hundred and fifty. You need that much was to like, start over? Was it like no, fifty? No. Just, no. Was it seventy-five? I mean, no, it wasn't even that 30, much. It was one point like six million. It, <laughs> 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 no, it wasn't. It was like fifty. It wasn't that. It wasn't even that much. Oh, wow. oh is it ten thousand dollars? It was more than that. Okay, twenty five. Quarter, 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 quarter. Oh, 25. I, I'm not mad at that. Around twenty five. Twenty five is a good start. So, so you, this is, so you got so seventy five thousand out of fake breakups. Well, I guess if you put it. Like <laughs> but this was move, and this was like so. Okay. Security deposit for your new place. All of seven that. But, grand. But let's go back to. That's very reasonable. Let's go back to I. I don't know if we talked about this on camera. I know we talked about it off camera. I decided to stop dancing for this man, and I. This was in my prom. I was the Beyonce of Magic City. I was making stupid money and and I was that girl in the club yeah. and he couldn't take it because of his profession and, and how he was raised and his upbringing and it just came to a point where he's like he's a, he's an executive in a major in the or a major record label he's like a president and he's like any given Monday any of my little rapper artists can come see my girl on That's stage God <laughs> booty damn. holes oh, and no. elbows nope, nope. I'm a shoe model I don't want my bitch to be a shoe model these niggas is, you know what I'm yeah. saying nah. And I used Magic to have City did dance that nude. I did with the water. Oh, he couldn't take it. I used to deep throw the water bottle and let it come all over my face. Imagine your employees seeing. <laughs> imagine your employees seeing and your wife. Like, and you're the president of a major label, so he he couldn't take it. They so definitely wouldn't have I respect. Stopped, um, I stopped right. dancing because it was you know out of respect for my relationship, and I, I completely like cut. My hustle that I was so I, I was get it. Yeah. So it's like I stopped my life for you. So now when it's time for me to restart, I'm gonna need. The, the, I'm gonna a, a say jump. this. I'm, I'm say not gonna it. lie. Cables. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's <laughs> that's cables? fair, especially because y'all dated for so long. For so long. Yeah. Nah, not even if they dated for so that's long. Fair. Rico's not gonna agree with me on this. No, I'm not. This I already not know gonna Rico. agree with. I was me. trying right. to avoid this part. I that's believe right. this wholeheartedly. Women, if you're in a good position and a man is telling you to stop doing what you're doing, negotiate a good deal for and yourself. And that was where I fucked up. Nah, I'm with that. I'm that with was that. where I fucked up. Good you know, you know where I fucked up? Yourself. I fucked up by not negotiating. My brother tells me this all the time. I fucked up by not negotiating and, a good and I, deal. Look. And I was blindsided because the day after I quit, I got a platinum Amex in the mail. So he you put me on his account as an authorized user, and initially it had no limit. So I had a, a so you, unlimited platinum Amex. So what? You could have did what you wanted. What deal? Yeah, I was but good. Here's, here's what but I say. That was an illusion. Here's that what was I say. Mirrors. It's the smoke and mirrors. Here's what I say to you. You could have found a way to get money it's, out of it. The first negotiation I tell tell <laughs> is that if you gotta tell the dude, I'm talking about dudes that are doing, you know, getting money, doing really well, real money. The first negotiation. Get you a two or three family. Get an investment property. No matter what happens, residuals. You are straight for the rest of your life. I didn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I negotiate moved, a deal. I moved oh, to New York. And I just saw we got this. A dog. I just saw this. You three said, family. wait. She said we moved to New York and we got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, but I'm just saying it's like, oh, I just saw this three family in Jersey City for like four fifty. Mm. And he's like, oh, here, here's a check. That's yours. Now here and now, hear me out here. 
um, you know, I spoke earlier that I don't have regrets and everything. No, you, well, because you're right? doing well for yourself. However, there are some things that I wish I would have made better choices. Okay. Did differently. Like, and yeah. did differently. And and that break, that leaving my height of my dance career for this man. You wouldn't have done without, it Without, no. And especially without a plan, I would not have done it that yeah. way. Um, but again, I learned the lesson. You know what happens now? I will never give a man full control of my life and my finances. You, I will never. You can. Ever. If you negotiate Give it. a man. No, I won't. Not even with a negotiation. So let's you know I'll negotiate because with you. Because the moment that he felt like I was out of hand or out of control. He can cut you off. He, no. Whenever but, he no, was mad at me, he would no. call Amex and put my shit on zero. No, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying about negotiating is this. He held that money let's, over my head. Let's say you, let's say you were the guy, right? And then he says, oh, I want you to stop doing I don't want you to ever do another podcast in your life. I don't want you to do anything. And you say, okay, baby, if we break up, you got to put a million in escrow. If we have a fight, I need half a brother. million. This is what my brother told if me. If we do, so this you are ready. Right, you negotiated your deals. My brother said what you should have did <laughs> was had that nigga put the. He it did. depends on what you told me after it, the fact, though. It depends I, because if you led like that, <laughs> no, you have to because no, he, only if you take her from something she's already doing. I mean, yeah, if she's already like she's already yeah, yeah. doing her thing. I mean, to be honest with you, this was a long time ago when you quit, right? 2011. Okay, so, and it was actually, you know, I, I was a young boy then and I was watching it. It was starting to grow. But by starting to grow, I mean, like, compared to the height of that um, profession right now. Right. So, the difference then was, and no, now. No, it was hotter back then. It was hotter then, and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yo, the nah, difference then, I'm going to tell you. The they, difference then and uh, now I, is I think it's hotter media. now because oh, it's it's they were commercialized. Covers and magazines oh. back then. No, exactly. Covers. Somebody said that she said she, she, she doesn't dance like she does today. She's nice with it. Yeah, I was an entertainer. Yeah, I was, was never. Oh, I was. I mean, magazines. but here's the thing. Back then, I started Magic City in 2005. I was there from 2005 to 2011, six mm -hmm. years, right? This is Jeezy coming to a club spending 40000 In one night. Regularly. Not just in one night. Big Meech. On the regularly, regularly, Big Meech and BMF. I came, like, right before they all got locked up. But the, the, the culture had already, the seed had already been planted. So now that the Dope Boys is in jail, here come the rappers and the ballplayers keeping it up. This is the Little Wayne and, and, and Fat Joe make it rain days. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, the money I was, was in different high then. There were there were ball players Crazy. and rappers coming in the Dope. club spending 20, 30, 40,000 like it was nothing. P, Q, QCP. 200 grand on a night, yeah. bro. That's how QCP much would be in the club. QCP was. You don't think they do that now? I think they do way more than that now. No, they don't. And he would <laughs> no, come to the club and spend <laughs> 20, that type 000. of money. So you're trying to tell me that the, the strip. The street nigga. The strip, the, the strip dance, the stripper slash dancer nightlife portion, right? has diminished in its gains or, or revenue. Yes, and I'm going to tell you why. In the last 10 years, 15 yes. years? I would say in the last... He's saying Elizabeth. <laughs> five to seven years, and I'm going to tell you why. Social media. Men aren't coming to the strip club when they can go down their timeline and see ass. What are they going to come to the strip club and buy it for? I guess that's true because that's when how I feel. When they can see it on a I fucking never phone. Thought about that. That's how I felt. I and these girls that. these days, I'm an OG in this game. These girls these days don't give fantasy. These I bartend in the strip club currently, and these girls be on the stage shooting guns and rapping and shit, and I'm like, girl, be sexy. Don't no man want to come in here and throw money on you because you shooting guns in the air? That's a fact. Girl, I laugh, though. It's fantasy. funny. It's fun. No, be a cool. fantasy. Yeah, you have when I was a dancer, it was... You are providing this fantasy for this man. He's going to come here to get what he can't get at home. He's going to come here to get away from his everyday problems. He's going to come here because he only could dream about having a girl like you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And he still can't even have you. But he can have you for these 20 minutes that you grinding on his dick. He can have you for this 15 minutes that you smile in his face. These girls don't do that these days. They're, they're so stuck on clout. They're so stuck on, on who knows me, how many followers I got, or the popularity of it. They took the fantasy out of strip. And guess what else left? The coin. Because <laughs> the fantasy is what really will get you the to pay. The fantasy is what got you the coin. That's it. Bye to TikTok. Bye, guys. Shout out TikTok. Big shout out to Thank TikTok. you for being here. We appreciate you. Make sure y'all jump onto YouTube Live if you want to keep watching or sign to our Patreon. Rico, 
in Elizabeth alone, just in two clubs, Cinderella's and there was another one, mm-hmm. bro. In Cinderella's, on a given night, on a given night, if there was less than 75 in that club being thrown that night, it was a slow night. And really? what year was this? Seven, this 045. Period. 045. Oh four five oh, you know when everything. I don't know no different. You gotta remember, like by the time I was eighteen. Oh four oh five, you was you was on the steps. You were still on the porch. How old are you? I'm twenty nine. So. Yeah. How old were you in oh four? Like I was in sixth grade. You were still on the couch. Maybe even less, right? I was twelve. I might have been in seventh grade, like. (laughs) So you had no idea what strip was. I'm no, I did like. But not really. I I mean you know. But not really. I started very early in my life. I was in the strip club by 16. Okay. But at you 12, know. you ain't know what was happening. By 12, nah. You knew about it, but you didn't know. I didn't, like, I didn't know. I never knew what the, the atmosphere was. Exactly. That's my. That's what I'm trying to say. You and honestly, by the time, from 16 to 18, I was already over the strip club. Like, I was like, this is, like, all right. Like. Let me tell y'all who loves the strip club. Older, Caucasian, professional men will forever be committed to strip. For young black males, for young minority, because I'm not just going to say black, because the Spanish and the Asians and, you know, the younger crowd, are they're here for the novelty. They're here for the, this song is hot and they throw the money on this song. My homeboy, a rapper, we try and get his song played. They're here for the, this is the thing. This is the popular, it's the popular thing to do. But the the older, and when I say older, I mean 35 and up, right? The 35 and up professional, p- professional man, mostly Caucasian, those are the ones who are gonna stay in the strip club and, and really be committed. The, the ones that's going in the champagne room, the ones that's trying to be sugar daddies. Those are who's keeping strip alive. This this hood club, black club, ghetto club, whatever you want to call it, era is slowly but surely dying. It's done. It's not it's the same. It's a different game. I don't even go. I bartend in the strip club. I, Shout out to Club Rain, Rain Atlanta, 16th. I bartend there on Wednesdays and Saturdays. For my birthday, I did a birthday set. I got on stage and danced. I didn't take my clothes off, but I got on stage and danced. When I did birthday sets at Magic City, the least amount of money I made was five thousand. The most amount of money I made was seventeen. I made three thousand dollars at my birthday set as me today. <laughs> but that's this, the but but that's the market. This. That's the way it is. There's no money in the clubs like that. My point. My well, guy, no money in the, the clubs. My, 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 she said, my guy, oh, I work in the hood. Yeah. I work in the hood club. Yeah. And they wasn't checking for me. I, yo, I tell people yeah, they this. Care. It's, it's, it, and I didn't shoot no guns in here. It, Maybe it's because you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Rico, I'm not even trying to be funny. It's like back, like, in, it's, it was very the, There were strips of cars that could go for 16 blocks, and they were all luxury cars. Lamborghinis, Ferraris, so. Rolls Royces. Bent, but now it's like, it's just Cadillac a different time. Big Cadillac that right. costs $120. The autobiography <laughs> Range Rover. I never even like, knew. You ain't about <laughs> to go down. Down memory lane. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy because, you know, as obviously, like, when you grow up, once you become an adult, whatever's the reality for that time frame is your reality of it. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, like I found myself becoming a little bit older when I started to had to tell my little young boys like about Lil Wayne and like his whole his whole time frame and they're like, well, Lil Wayne was really like a popular rapper and it's like, wait, what? Lil Wayne gave me my name. Lil Wayne gave you your name. P.G. McGuire. See, there we go. See. Wow, really? That's crazy. There's also a song where he talks about how good I suck his dick, but. I don't think I ever said that on camera. Or you just said that. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. We still got that consent I mean, form, right? People, yeah, look, I, stand, I stand by my shit. Um, so there was this time where me and Wayne had a little friendship with Benefits Friendship. He was my buddy. And, you know, I went to Wayne's World a lot. And um, he, um, when I got into my relationship with my ex, I just kind of faded away from talking to him, being with him, because now I'm in this relationship. And I hadn't seen him for two years because I've been in this relationship. And we're at Summer Jam. And I told this story on lip service, but I never told that it was Lil Wayne. So now everybody that heard the story on lip service, it's Lil Wayne. Um, <laughs> I was at the concert with my boyfriend at the time, who was my ex that I was with for so long, mm-hmm. and a music industry executive, remember that part. And Lil Wayne sees me, and he throws his hands up, and I'm like, oh, shit, right? 
And then he's he's performing at Summer Jam. It's him and Corey Gunn, six foot, seven foot. He says his verse. When Corey Gunn goes to rap his verse, he runs to the side of the stage, grabs my face, and kisses me in my mouth. My boyfriend is standing right behind me. Like, I was a big Lil Wayne fan. Go! <laughs> but he didn't know that he didn't know that I was in a relationship. He didn't know that I was with yeah, he this guy. Was being disrespectful. It was a it was a very natural um, reaction to seeing his bitch that he ain't seen in two years because I kind of just like faded away like and stopped speaking to him, um, and that was a that became a problem. Now I had already told my boyfriend that me and him had what we had because I would never want it to come to him to find out on yeah no. Yeah. So I felt like you know in the beginning of us being serious, I felt like okay since y'all are in the same industry and I assume y'all know each other then i should probably tell you that this is this guy that i had yeah. something with it was never a real relationship i've never said i was his girlfriend we just had what we had but in hindsight i wish that i didn't tell him because they wasn't even really friends and he threw it up in my face every chance he get and oh god when that man kissed me in my face it made it so much worse oh and then two years after that the song came out he says my bitch named gg suck my dick i'd be like goodness gracious fuck he used to say my g still for goodness gracious because i used to have that nigga climbing up the fucking bed i know that song <laughs> Stick in my mouth. I know I'm, that song. I'm Gigi. Devastation. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Bitch. I I'm like, Gigi, and, that's crazy. Like. Yeah, that's me. So, so um, the that's whole name thing wild. is, I was on the tour bus. <laughs> I, I was on the tour bus. We was probably high on X or something. I don't know. And uh, smoking some weed. And um, he's playing unreleased music. And he says, like, Weezy McGuire, show me the money. And I repeat it. Gigi McGuire, show me the money. Go. He's like, yeah. Go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Keep that. Run with that. So that's how the McGuire came on to Gigi. And I, I kept it ever since. And I actually owned that. I copyrighted Gigi Smart. McGuire back in 2012. So I owned the rights to use Gigi McGuire as a name for entertainment purposes. So anybody who thought that they were slick, you got to pay licensing fees. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Our business is good over here. Wait, I haven't seen him in a long time. And we had a really good friendship that lasted about three or four years. Yeah, um, shout out to Weezy. Shout out to yeah. Gigi. He's my guy. Big shout out. And I've always heard nothing but good things about him. He's so. amazing. He's very smart. He's a family man. He will take care of everybody around you. <laughs> One time I was on a tour bus and my period came on. And I woke <laughs> up in a pool of blood and I was scared to tell him. And when I finally told him, he laughed at me. Like, I was so scared that he was going to flip out on me. And I'm like, I should have known, like, you know, I'm, I, I should have known that my period was coming. I should have been prepared. And he's like, you're a woman. That shit happens. Like, what, what's wrong with you? And I was just like, you're not mad. And he was like, <laughs> why would I be mad that you got your period? And I'm like, it's on your sheets. And he's like, we can get new sheets, girl. Like, you're tripping. Like, I literally was scared. To it was me and another girl because we have a lot of threesomes. And we woke up in the morning. You are going to blame her? No, 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 no. Oh. We woke up in the morning. No, no, no. We woke up in the morning. And he left the bed, and we're still in the bed. And when I realize I'm laying in a pool of blood, I tell her, like, oh, shit, I just got my period. What am I going to do? And she's like, you got to tell him. I'm like, I'm scared. And she's like, just tell him. And I'm like, no, I'm scared. And then <laughs> she's like, all right, I'm going to go to the front and get him and tell him to come back here. So then that way, it'll just be you, and you can tell him. So she went, and she's like, Gigi needs you on the back. And you were sitting there like a scared dog. The, like your I poodle. Was sitting on the I was sitting on the towel, like, um. I, I, I don't know how to it. tell you this. Uh -huh. Put your hand right here so you can just feel how hard my heart is beating because I'm so scared <laughs> to tell you this right now. And he's like, what? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like, just promise me you're not going to be mad. And he's like, what? What's wrong? And I'm like... He think it's something way I'm worse. Like, yeah. right. like, <laughs> I just woke up to my period. Like, and he's like, okay. <laughs> he's like, thank God. It could have been. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. I'll take that over anything else. <laughs> but, yeah, um, that's the, a few of my but, Wayne memories. I don't know. That was kind of... Big shout out to Butterflies on YouTube. Um, oh no, somebody said something. Oh, I'm not gonna read that. Uh oh. No, it's not nothing yeah. bad. They're oh, just okay. saying that they they want they want to see a lot more people on, on the live. Well, oh. Believe me. First of all, we're not putting we're gonna not put this video out until we're gonna edit it from the cameras. We just wanted to share the moment with you guys. Yeah. Nice. And then the production you know, moment. Yeah, we wanted to just share the production moment, but this is probably gonna come out in a couple of days. Yeah. This is so dope. You got yeah, well, Gigi, I wanna say <laughs> thank you for pulling up. You know, one thing about me is like I'm a person who just I love and live for honesty, especially on people's stories. But like but honesty that people understand their own story. Like some people just be, be being honest with their own lies. No. Does that make sense? Let me tell you something about me. For one, I smoke a whole lot of weed. I know I don't smoke on camera or I don't like kind of put out that 
pothead persona, but if you know me in real life, y'all you be cool it on your show. I smoke. Yeah. A, I do. I be seeing a lot of weed, right? <laughs> like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I come out, I pop out when I need to, but I've learned from doing lip service and with having so many people in the conversation, I've learned to um, take those pockets and jump in and not over talk. I used to do a lot of over talking. Okay. Um, when I was drinking, you know, when you're trying to get your point across and you you, you cut in. We're so used to this on eight at the table, yeah. And, and 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 you speak a little louder so that you know your voice can be overpowering mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying. So I I learned to not do that and maybe sometimes I I don't speak up as much because of that, and that probably is something I need to work on, but I would rather be more respectful to the guests and my co-hosts and kind of fall back yeah. than keep pushing myself and trying to make my voice be heard. Right, you guys do a great job. You, yeah. you guys do uh, you. an Fantastic amazing, job. amazing yeah, job. Thank you. Shout out to Lip Service. Shout out to Angela for giving me that opportunity. Um, her and my ex are really good friends, and me and her created our own relationship. And when she decided to make Lip Service a podcast, she just felt like I would be perfect to be a co-host because I'm so open and I'm so sexual and I'm, I'm just so watch real and that. transparent. Yeah. Thank you. You guys, have, and yeah, you know, in, in the beginning, people kind so of was like, too, like, "I'm very," and and that's what that's I was. That's what say. I like the, the experience. Is, the thing is, in the beginning, it it kind of came off like I was proud to be a slut. Like this bitch always talking about this. She didn't did this. She didn't did that. Da, 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 da. But this has really been my life, and I, I I think that again, going back to why I think I we didn't get to that. Um, it kind of skipped over, but why I think I have one of the best vaginas in the world. Besides, yeah, I wanted to know. Do we have more time? Besides people we telling time. me, we have time. Besides people telling me that I have amazing sex, head, vagina, everything, that I'm just very good in bed and very passionate. Besides the people that I've been with telling me that, I enjoy sex. I enjoy every right. part of sex, right? So when you enjoy something, you're gonna be good at it. Yep, sure. And also, I'm a pleaser. I'm a giver, and yes, I've had a lot of experience. When you do something a lot of times, you become good at it. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. And and not to say that I've had a lot of experience with different <laughs> people, nice. because guess what? People always say, oh, she slept with 20 niggas, she a hoe. But I can have one nigga and fuck him 55 times, the same amount of times that this bitch got fucked by 20 niggas. You don't got to explain do nothing to anybody. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just saying in general. Wait, hold on, wait, time out. Uh, wait. No, 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 no. I was with you. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you why. I agree, I agree. The box is getting beat by one person yeah. twice as much as it's getting beat by multiple people. The box is going to still be the box. Well, you it depends because now we got to get into real things in the sense of like, <laughs> Okay, the box is getting beat by one person a thousand times, right? Versus... 50 people a thousand times. Versus 50 people a thousand, a thousand times. 50 people 500 times. The box is getting beat twice as much by one person. Than it is. Half as much by multiple people. But the multiple people is the problem. Well, the multiple people, yeah, because you got... Well, I don't know. This is just me being open and transparent. You know, I had a long reign of... Um, unprotected sex mm -hmm. right so like if you got 50 unprotected sexers that's way different than having one person a thousand times i'm cool with that you know what i'm saying and i think that i'm just speaking from the experience level yeah so i've had a lot of experience i was a serial girlfriend serial wifey but i've always been in a relationship and you've always been very real sexual yeah. always i'm very sexual i've always been i'm never single i was I, well until I was single when I broke up with my ex. I was single for like two years, um, but I was having sex, clearly. But Did you um, have a boyfriend in those two years? No, I have a boyfriend now, but I spent two years single, and I, I did have some sex. I had some really good sex. Did you date? Like, go out, or did you just yeah, of did course. you circle back to yeah. old friends? No, 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 no. Um, I, I dated. There was a guy that I dated that I never had sex with. Um, there was a guy that I dated that I had a lot of sex with. Um, Wait, what was the difference between them two? Because you were dating the them both. That I, dated yeah. that I didn't have sex with. Yeah. yeah. I he was very generous and he was. Um, what did Esso say? Esso said they don't was, want gentlemen. He was, no, no, no. <laughs> well, it's he not probably that. just taking care of her. I'm gonna tell y'all what it was. He was very generous. So I like a, I like a man that is gonna offer without you having to ask. And he right? did that. And he did that, right? I also like a man who is in intelligent, and he was not that. Oh. <laughs> he was, uh, he was oh. not intelligent. Oh, and, 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 and not to say that you have to be a scholar because guess what? I never graduated high school. I don't have anybody's diploma or degree. However, I'm still intelligent. Oh my god! You know, and this man was kind of a dummy, and I was completely <laughs> turned off 
by the fact that this man was a dunce. He was a dunce. And I, it would be like, that's my, be things that's like, my pet peeve. He didn't know what a hermit crab was. What? Um, Jay Z put out his, um, his, um, Catalog on his birthday, and I was—I'm a huge Jay Z fan, and I was—I was happy that Jay Z put out his catalog because now I don't only have to listen to title; I can go to Spotify and hear Jay. Right? Yeah. This man says, "Well, what's a catalog?" Oh. <laughs> He wanted to get into the music industry. He wanted to. He wanted to get into the music industry. He, I guess he had some street money that he was trying to flip and get in the music industry, and he was try, hoping that I could help him with my uh, celebrity Rolodex and, you know, the, the people I, that I rub shoulders with and elbows with on a regular basis, right? And I asked him, I said, well, what's your drive? He said, what do you mean? What kind of money I got to put up? No, nigga, why you want to do this shit? You want to know what his answer was? <laughs> well, my homeboys... He was from, um, oh, I don't want to say. That's not, yeah, that's not safe. I don't want to say he was from. He's but from somewhere in the U.S. His homeboy he had to from be, his town. He had to be far away from the tri state. <laughs> into some artists that made it big, so he felt like he was left behind and he could do the same thing. Oh, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Was he in Dayton? No, I'm don't. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Kind of close. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a difference. In, and listen, it got to the point where he did so much without me having to ask. I almost felt like I owed him some pussy. Like, even though I wasn't sexually attracted to him. Even though you didn't give it to him. him. That's how it usually happens. Even happens. though I wasn't sexually attracted to him, I felt so like happens. by default, if he tried, you got to give, it to, give it to him because he earned the pussy. Yep. But he, he never, never tried. Because he was scared. He never tried. And it would he be didn't like, take it, he but slept, he earned it. He slept in my bed. <laughs> I was like paying for food and not eating. He slept in my bed. <laughs> multiple times naked? and yes and he never tried why didn't you take it because she i didn't wanted. care i didn't oh care. So, is he gay? no oh i mean and lot, he did mention one time like you know we should have been coloring or something but i mean I, my ass oh, was, you know that this you know the <laughs> and you ain't do nothing so i turned that ass off and went to sleep what you want me to do break it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I am an initiator. Maybe, but I'm, I'm about an to initiator, say, but I'm an initiator. Can when I ask I, you a question, though? Well, you initiated by being naked. I'm about to say, so that kind of works out. Weren't you probably, I, I'm guessing, I'm not even. And this, was, you, this was during the two years that I was single, single from leaving my So you was, you was hot and ready. Yes. Okay. Did you kind of initiate and lead the relationship for the majority of the other categories? Like everything if, else was the reason why he stayed around. Like in a sense, so it was you, like if we want to eat, or if if you mm. want to eat, we're gonna go here. Okay, boom. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're well, gonna do this. Mostly because he lived in another city. So when I saw him, it was because he came to visit in Atlanta. And the first two times I made him get a suite. Um, but this, but after the second time, I I let him come to my house. So he probably came to my house maybe four or five times. So maybe, you know, he was in my yeah, area. He was in my town. So, of course, I'm going to say, let's go here, let's go there. Because nah, nah, I never nah. took a trip anywhere. I never went to his. No, but, but who was leading money, the so relationship? I kind of yeah, had, yeah, like, yeah, home yeah. team advantage. No, you had um, all, you had the pants. Like, we got to be realistic. You had the pants okay. of the relationship. Okay, I never thought about it like that, but I'm, you was I'm in control. He was you, scared. Yo, he was scared to take a. He was now, honestly, scared of rejection. He was intimidated. Men, men are scared of rejection. I or, think or he was intimidated. He was intimidated. I think That's, he was intimidated. And he's like, he whatever was, she's gonna be okay with is what I'm going with. I'm not gonna move myself. Yeah. So if you started something, then he would react. He was a reciprocator. I, think, I, I definitely think he was intimidated yeah. for sure. And listen, his loss because you wanted to give it to him. I he's didn't. tight. Well, right he now. I would have. I felt like he earned it, even though I didn't want to have sex with him. I felt like, damn, this man. And did so so much for me. I can't tell him. Does that. he have a second chance if you were to be single again? Like, hey, I heard you I, talking on eight at the pass. table. I can't get over. I can't get over that. Dunk Can I just cap. get that little? You know what I'm saying? That, that <laughs> just that little that, one thing. That like. dunk cap ain't coming off. And the time had listen. Statute of limitation. That time has passed. That, that coupon. That coochie coupon has expired. Yeah. Okay. God damn, bro. Sorry. Hey, big he's fella. Mad. He's gonna see this. <laughs> He's gonna Probably. be like, Damn. learn from but your mistakes. Learn, He's gonna be like, Damn it. All right. Wow, this is a real crystal glass. Y'all got money over here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna say thank you to Gigi Maguire. This was an incredible, Go. incredible YouTube. We're gonna have this up probably for another hour, then we're taking it down. So if y'all gonna watch it, watch it. Period. And then you guys will see it again um in like a day or two. We're gonna put it back up after it's edited. Nice. So 
Big shout out. Big Thank shout out to you Gigi. Want to say I appreciate y'all first and foremost for Thank having you. me. Thank you this for coming. Is so you refreshing. Dope. And I just, you know, I love to be able to um, have healthy communication with, you know, like minded folks and, you know, healthy debates and that that thing so i really didn't know what to expect i did watch a few shows didn't know what to expect but um, <laughs> i'm here for it so i appreciate okay. y'all um anybody looking for my only fans miss show me the money link in my bio on instagram yeah oh i haven't you know what i'ma do the water i ain't did it in a long time my ex made me stop doing it i'ma do it look you, mean, you know these my days, first time i actually want to go and sign up to somebody i'ma do the water fans. on only fans it's all it. support and my hair, my hair <laughs> it's I, all I support right now too, so i can do it yeah i can do it um so um uh, miss show me the money um only fans forward slash m s s h o w m e t h e m o n e y um, that's also my hashtag if you ever want to find anything I posted on Instagram. My Instagram is at Gigi Maguire, G-I-G-I-M-A-G-U-I-R-E. Same on Twitter, even though I don't be over there that much. And um, Lip Service, you can find me on Angela Yee's Lip Service podcast. We release episodes every Tuesday on Angela Yee's YouTube page. Um, I'm at in Atlanta. Come to Atlanta. Come see me at Rain. I got you on the Casamigo shot. Um, pull up. Tell me that you saw me on eight at the table and first drink on me. Um, I'm there Wednesday nights and Saturday nights behind the bar in my blue ensemble. My titties on my chin. Because I, I like to do this. Oh, you know. Um, I don't know what else. Oh, um, uh, what's coming up? What I got going on? Shit. Follow me. I don't know. Find me. I'm here. And then we're going to tag. We're going to tag Gigi. <laughs> and we're going to put a bunch of stuff in the stories. So. Oh, yeah. So if you didn't get a chance to watch season two of P-Valley, thank you for that. If you didn't get a chance to see season two of P-Valley, um, here's the thing with P-Valley. A lot of men feel like they can't watch it because of all of the homosexuality. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, I was just in the room. But I seen season the, one. The, and, and we met Uncle Clifford at um, the Tribeca Film Festival. Nice, Very cool nice. people. Shout out, to, shout out to Nico. Yeah, shout dope. out to Katori Hall. Shout out to Brandy. Shout out to the whole so P-Valley family. Um, I'm, I'm here for it all. Uh, season two, I make an appearance as myself on episode five. And um, P. Valley, you know, a lot of men feel like they can't watch it because of the homosexual activities, but it's about a strip club. It's it's two gay people, maybe three, but it's 50 <laughs> bitches and 100 titties. So go watch P. Valley. And it has a really good storyline as well. Um, not, and I'm not just saying that because it's, it's yours. My life. <laughs> it's, it's really a good story. I've seen season um, one. It's a good. It's, it's also, good. I did We TV's Beyond the Pole season two. If you want to go watch that on all black or we tv you can find that on demand um just watch out for your girl i got a book coming i'm just trying to do the most yeah somebody said that aaron the renegade was they like wanna, you need they to, want my you, book yeah they, they everybody's want my waiting book for that book they want my book bad it's i'm working on it angela's actually helping me with my book so. okay shout out to angela yeah, shout out to angela we love Big angela. shout out to her um the book you know what one thing about the book i started i used to sit on wayne's tour bus with a with a three ring binder and and write and, and he would be like, what are you writing? And I'd be like, my book. And he's like, just writing it? And I'd be like, yeah. The thing with that is I was still living my story. I, I right, and, you still and I never, and I still am, but I never really felt like the time. You know, everything is about timing when yeah. it comes to, you know, this type of shit. And I feel like I was still living my story. I feel like yes, I was popular in some aspects, but I didn't have the star power that I have now. Yeah. And not to say that because I'm not the biggest, but, no, but you, I am big have, enough you, right now. And I've told my story and tidbits of my story between lip service and interviews like this enough times that I feel like it's time to give the people more because yeah, I, I keep leaving little breadcrumbs. It's, it's time to just cut the damn bread. But even so, even yeah. even dope <laughs> is that after something like this, like this conversation, people will run to go get the book because mm -hmm. they want to read the story. Mm -hmm. They want to know more. You see what I'm saying? You see how they run into OnlyFans, mm -hmm. so they'll run to Barnes and Noble. Who's that? You mean we? <laughs> yeah. And I've up. never signed up, but up with my OnlyFans. I'm, I'm gonna support Gigi. I'm a, I'm gonna get, get the water. I gotta get I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the water. We gonna support Gigi. I'm gonna pour the water trick out. I'm gonna pour the water trick out just for y'all. Can we get an eight at the table only fan so we can support our guests? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. Subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. I thank you for coming. We I, appreciate I really it. Do. Yes. YouTube, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, definitely jump on the Patreon, guys. Daybox, you guys know what it is. Thank you to Gigi McGuire for coming through. 
looking forward to it and um just good to have really strong positive energy people that you know that are real i think the real always survive the test of time it doesn't matter when you real you real and it's just like it's it's hard to explain that to somebody who's not so period everybody could be real if you find the real you and you be Mm -hmm. your real self self. and once you be your real self you can make it through anything peace everybody yes part two whenever y'all need me i mean got it